This is CBS. A student protest going on this noon at the University of Minnesota. Students concerned over the school's dealings with companies that do business in South Africa. There were also protests this morning as President Reagan gave his VE Day speech in France. And today we'll be talking about states and cities who want badly to attract your tourism dollars. And the spring begins today as Minnesota tries to rid itself of gypsy moths. Details coming up. I was having nightmares about my toilet. Was I getting it clean? Now I use Santa Flush. Down deep, I know I need Santa Flush and a brush. Because Santa Flush is one tough bowl cleaner with all the cleaning power I want. The cleaning power of Santa Flush comes from its special formulation that fights bowl germs, odors, even rust. Now that's the clean I want. Goodbye toilet nightmares. It's tough to beat Santa Flush and a brush. Down deep, you know it. I wish Mommy was here. Who do you think made Mommy feel better when she was your age? You, Grandpa. Over 20 million times every year, people bring their prescriptions to a Kmart pharmacy. Two teaspoons? For top brand name pharmaceuticals or generic equivalents where allowed. Feels better. And precise computerized prescription service, all at a Kmart price. I thought this might make you feel better, too. You can't. What do I want to eat this week? Something light. Something healthy. Vandy Camp's new light fillets. But it's got to taste great. They taste remarkably fresh because they're frozen fresh. And they're lightly breaded, so each thick fillet has less than 300 calories. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to need a lot more lemon. Vandy Camp's, the freshest ideas in frozen fish. Serving and informing the Twin Cities for four decades. This is WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And now, Bill Carlson, Debbie Ely, Bud Kraling, and Tony Parker bring you Channel 4's Noon Report. General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. The flags of freedom fly all over Europe. That was then, and this is now. The United States does not seek to undermine or change the Soviet system, nor to impinge upon the security of the Soviet Union. At the same time, it will resist attempts by the Soviet Union to use or threaten force against others or to impose its system on others by force. Good afternoon. President Reagan's words came this morning in France as he addressed the European Parliament. And President Truman's came on this day in 1945. A different tone, but both marking the same occasion. VE Day, victory in Europe. Mr. Reagan praised Europe for rising from the ruins of World War II, but took the occasion to warn against the Soviet Union in much the same tone he has taken before. His comments about the Soviet intervention in Central America brought some boos, and some walked out of his speech. You know, I've learned something useful. Maybe if I talk long enough in my own Congress, some of those will walk out. For the most part, Europeans are marking the day with solemn ceremonies. Because there are many still living who remembered six years of war right in their own backyards, at Westminster Abbey, they gathered to mark the occasion. The ceremony was scaled down due to a request from Prime Minister Thatcher, who did not want to interfere with Britain's rekindled relationship with Germany. And there are mixed feelings in West Germany, where there are also ceremonies for VE Day. A poll shows that a silent majority feel there's nothing worth commemorating. Still, many are. The Soviet Union today held its own ceremonies involving top Soviet brass. New leader Mikhail Gorbachev said we should remind ourselves today that we should work to prevent war before it becomes war. There are many trying to prevent and get rid of apartheid policies in South Africa. And today, some University of Minnesota students and faculty members are joining in the effort with a protest at the university against the university. Claire Woodward, a faculty member, joins us live this noon hour. Claire, could you tell us a little bit more about your protest? 
Yes, we are here today because the regions are meeting tomorrow and Friday. And we are here to tell them that we want the South Africa item on the agenda. It was on the agenda and they took it off of the agenda. And we think that the reason they did that was to hold it until classes are over, when there is nobody around the university. Now, specifically, the South African item is what? Pardon, say that again. Specifically, the South African item is what? Uh, the, our item is that we would like them to divest in companies with holdings in South Africa. Are there considerable holdings? Yes, there are. There are $35 million in holdings in companies doing business in South Africa. And that amount is $10 million more than it was last year. Our holdings and companies doing business in South Africa is going up, not down. Claire, I understand that uh, President Keller has come up with a special task force to look into the university's dealings. What do you think of this special task force? I think it's a typical administrative bureaucratic response. I think that there's no uh, indication that anything will come of it. What you have to understand is that six years ago, a uh, committee of faculty and students going through the normal, the so-called legitimate channels of the university made a recommendation that was almost unanimous that the university to divest in companies doing business in South Africa. In other words, that study has already been made. It was made five years ago. And to now talk about doing another study, I think is simply to put the issue off. Claire, thank you for joining us. Claire Woodward joining us from a protest now going on at the university. There are sketchy details coming in on a fatal shooting last night in Lakeville. Police responded to a call at the Queen Anne Trailer Court uh, near I-35 about 2 o'clock. There was an exchange of gunfire and a man was shot and killed. No police officers were injured. Police won't say anything more, but a news conference is scheduled for 1 o'clock. Authorities should be making some decisions today regarding any possible charges in an apparent murder-suicide attempt yesterday in Minneapolis. A mother and her two children were found near the river at 42nd and West River Road. Police say the woman gave her children and herself an overdose of drugs. All three are in serious condition today. Minneapolis police say there were 17 more arrests in their second night of crackdowns along a stretch of Hennepin Avenue. The charges include begging, disorderly conduct, drinking in public, and prostitution. Undercover agents are targeting this area between 6th and 7th Streets. This follows 23 arrests in that area Monday night. Bill? The Minnesota House has approved a bill calling for a 25% increase in education spending over the next two years, but without Governor Purpich's pet plans. The $2.6 billion plan does not include the controversial open enrollment plan, nor plans for a state arts high school. The Noon Report will continue in a moment on this VE Day 40 years later. This is London. London is celebrating today in a city which became a symbol. The scars of war are all about. Six years is a long time. I have observed today that people have very little to say. There are no words. I'm watching my shape, I probably always win. But just because I'm dieting, must eating lose its thrill. Not on your life, Buster. Cause now there's Weight Watchers, bologna and hot dogs. Weight Watchers, salami and ham. Tastes so good, you really gotta try it. No one puts delicious in a diet like Weight Watchers can. Weight Watchers meats, all less than 100 calories a serving, all 100% delicious. No one puts delicious in a diet like Weight Watchers can. Mom, Mom, you give me gray creep. <gasps> gray creep? It's even in my sheets. It's taking over my clothes. Hard water causes gray creep. Calgon cures it. Calgon softens hard water like detergents alone can't. Gets your clothes cleaner, brighter, whiter. Mom, the gray creep's gone. My blouse is white again. I've been washing with Calgon. Calgon turns hard water gray into soft water white. The first step to anything worthwhile is usually the hardest. So your Culligan man wants to make your first step to determining your home's water quality as easy as possible. You've seen Culligan's simple in-home water test. The sure way to learn if your home's water needs professional analysis by your Culligan man. Thousands of these do-it-yourself kits have been mailed to area homes. If you didn't receive yours, take that first step now and dial this toll-free number. At no cost or obligation, Culligan will send you a test kit. It's that easy. Your Culligan man will also send you these money-saving coupons, offers never seen on TV that can save you over $100. Even if you already have a water softener, call for your Culligan test kit and coupon now. In Minnesota, call 1-800-682-3816. 
in Wisconsin, call 1-800-328-3890. If lines are busy, please try again. Because this can be the easiest first step you'll ever take to solve the hardest problem in your home. There was talk Garrison Keeler might move the Prairie Home Companion elsewhere if the Minnesota legislature did not approve funding for the show's theater. The talk was started by him and now ended by him. Keeler says he will stay in Minnesota irregardless. If this is spring, I don't want summer to come. This is gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> you stay like this, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, we've taken a picture of this beautiful day, taken from the satellite. This is what it looks like. It's sunny over most of the five state area. Well, we've got a few little fluffy clouds up in northwestern Minnesota around Bemidji and a little cloud around Des Moines. Temperatures are in the 60s in the northern part of Minnesota, mostly 70s in the southern part of the state. A lot of sunshine. And uh, temperatures are a little cooler at Grand Marais. The wind is off the lake there. The last temperature reading we had at Grand Marais was 43 degrees. In the Twin Cities, a sunny, warm, breezy afternoon with the afternoon temperature near 80. And more on our midweek weather forecast a little later on the noon report. Officials of the State Department of Agriculture spent much of this morning spraying for gypsy moths. The moths are in the larval stage, known to destroy hardwood trees, especially oaks. The infestations of gypsy moths had been found in sites in Apple Valley, White Bear Lake, and Lakeville. Agricultural Department authorities say the insecticide being sprayed is biologically based and affects only the gypsy moth. This is the third year of such treatments, and the second stage of this year's effort will be completed in the next seven to ten days. Well, it seems that everybody wants you to visit and bring money, too. Massive tourism campaigns are underway in Minnesota and other places. It's a subject Colleen Needles has been looking into this week in a series, special series, series. She joins us to talk about what she's found. Some of us talk better than others, Colleen. <laughs> Perhaps this, there is a lot of money being spent. We see it in ads all over the place. Definitely. Well, summer's not quite here, but this is the time people are planning those summer vacations. And that's very evident if you've been watching television or reading magazines and newspapers. They're full of a barrage of advertisements from Minnesota and from surrounding states. This is one advertisement that the state of Minnesota is running here and throughout the Midwest region. Uh, the state is spending $1.5 million this year to advertise Minnesota as a vacation haven, but it is not the only one. This is an advertisement about Chicago. Illinois spent nothing on advertising last year. This year, they're spending $10 million. So they obviously are getting very serious about it. Michigan is spending $3.5 million this year to advertise its state. But Ontario is the uh, place that has long spent a lot of money to advertise itself, $16 million this year to try and lure you and your American dollars into Canada. All these places are advertising for very good reason. For, for example, in 1983, tourists uh, created 111,000 jobs in Minnesota, and they spent $4.4 .4 billion here. You're looking now at Izades, a resort up on Mille Lacs. That owner of that uh, resort says that they feel that the state's advertising has done them a lot of good. They feel that they're, or they, they know that their out-of-state requests are twice this year than what they were in the past, and they don't advertise out of state, so they figure the state's advertising is helping them. The smaller resort, All Seasons, however, says they don't think that the state's advertising does them any good at all. In fact, this owner has seven cabins, and he says he's able to fill them through word of mouth and repeat business. And he had uh, some advice he'd like to offer the state. He said instead of spending all this money on advertising, he'd like them to lower the fishing license for out-of-state visitors so it's easier for people from Iowa or Illinois or Wisconsin to come here and fish. So as a result, there isn't general agreement, obviously. There isn't, and the state uh, officials say they, too, don't say this is a cure-all for our all-resort business owners. They say that some are having a very good year and some are having a real tough time. However, all the people we talked to up in Mille Lacs uh, and the majority of them liked the state's advertising, but everyone predicted a banner year this year for okay. tourism. Okay, Colleen, more information on later newscasts. Tonight at 10. Okay, thank you very much. It was Dome Ball versus Bill Ball last night between the Twins and the Yankees. Tony Parker has that story next. Keep your yard from looking like a jungle with quality lawn and garden supplies from True Value Hardware Stores. 
Get the Green Thumb broadcast spreader that quickly and evenly spreads seed and fertilizer. For a quick greening lawn, use Green Thumb lawn food that also provides long-term feeding. Get the Green Thumb four cubic foot lawn cart to tote yard supplies. And water any area with the Green Thumb 75 foot reinforced vinyl hose from participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. It's not as though people ignore the signs of eye trouble. They often don't see them until it's too late. But now there's a place dedicated to preserving the miracle of sight. It's a place where the staff is trained to support and serve one purpose, caring for your eyes. Where physicians use the latest laser technology to improve and restore sight. If you have a question about your eyes, call our iWatch hotline. The Phillips Eye Institute at Mount Sinai Hospital. The future of eye care never looked better. How can people with arthritis live a more comfortable life? Take your arthritis to a doctor and then discover Ascriptin, the brand doctors recommend most for flare-ups of minor arthritis pain and stiffness. Only Ascriptin contains aspirin plus Maalox. That's right. Aspirin to relieve your pain for hours plus Maalox to comfort your stomach equals Ascriptin, the stomach comfort aspirin. Live a more comfortable life. Discover Ascriptin, the stomach comfort aspirin. Boku has a plan, and they begin by digging into those two scoops of plump, juicy raisins in Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Cooked up and in command, they're working now, but they're thinking how they love two scoops and golden flakes of bran. Two scoops, they're turning back again for two scoops of plump, juicy raisins in Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Now with even more raisins, even harder to resist. Two scoops. A real economic boost for Egan. United Parcel Service has announced it will build a major distribution center there. Construction is set to begin later this month, with the building expected to be open November 1st of next year. 200 employees will be transferred to the Egan Center from Minneapolis, but UPS will also be hiring about 700 additional workers. This week, our four-year money reporter, Jim Newman, has investigated which bike locks are the most effective and whether Twin Cities convenience stores are really convenient. Today, he checks out where the real values are in certificates of deposit. Every day, corporations and governments borrow cash on the money market. Your certificate of deposit lets some of your money flow into this sea of cash. Once here, your CD investment will earn market rate interest. That's usually twice what a passbook savings account will pay. But remember, as a CD investor, you are no longer just a depositor. You are lending money. And you'll pay a penalty if you withdraw your money before the maturity or payback date of the CD. David and Marnie Baer are thinking of investing $5,000 in a six-month CD. In the Twin Cities, they can shop for CDs at banks, industrial loan and thrifts, savings and loans, and brokerage houses. We compared the full-term yield on the Bears' $5,000 six-month CD at these institutions. Others may offer equal or even better results. In our survey, the Bears' $5,000 earned the most at investors' savings. That's a $22 spread, of course, between investors' savings and the lowest yield at First Bank. The market rate investors' savings was willing to pay the bears for their money was higher almost every week since January 1st. Take the week of March 5th, for example. Investors' savings was a full percentage point over two of its competitors. Since the week of purchase market rate is yours for the life of the CD, investors' savings was a clear choice that week. For our survey calculations, we averaged each institution's effective weekly rate for the first three months of 1985. Though rates fluctuated week to week, investor savings was on top most of the time. A spokesman claims, as a general rule, investor savings currently offers the highest rates on CDs of up to three years in length. Most institutions increase their market rate the longer the term of the certificate of deposit. Take a 24-month CD, for example. Investors' savings paid an average of 10.89% the first three months this year. Another way to earn high interest is to buy a CD from a brokerage firm. Merrill Lynch, for instance, does not sell its own certificates of deposit, but trades in CDs from all over the country. Some financial institutions, particularly in the Southwest, offer market rates up to two percentage points higher than those available in the Twin Cities. And Merrill Lynch, as broker, 
markets CDs from San Antonio to San Jose as it markets stocks and bonds. And you can sell your certificate of deposit back to the broker before maturity without paying a penalty. However, you might not recoup your investment in a bad market. There is some risk of loss. The risk of loss is a function of the fluctuation of the cost of money. Cost of money goes up, there's some risk of the sale price, selling price of your CD going down. At the other institutions in our survey, by the way, the withdrawal penalties can be substantial. Three months interest on a six month CD is the most common penalty. Only Citicorp of South Dakota's penalty is significantly milder. David and Marnie Bear would lose only one month in simple interest should they cash their six month CD early. With Tomorrow at noon, Jim will look into uh, what the luxurious life is like in the Twin Cities when money is no option. I wish I had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Twin Cities have been one of Billy Martin's favorite places, but right. now that the Homer Dome is here, I think he now may be revising like some of that attitude. Huh? That was in the old days of the old Met, right? Yeah. The Twins beat the Yankees 8-6 to six last night in the Metrodome. It was a game that again gave clear evidence that the place wasn't designed for baseball. It's a great place to watch football, especially in a cold winter day, but baseball in the dome? I don't know. After the Yankees scored a pair in the top of the first on three doubles, Mickey Hatcher popped one up at the bottom of the inning that should have been a routine out, except the Yankees lost the ball in the Teflon roof. Where is it? Oh, there it is. The Twins loaded the bases on three singles before Roy Smalley came up for the first time. Roy slammed a legitimate double into the plastic tarp in right field that handcuffed Dave Winfield and two runs scored, giving the Twins a 3-2 lead after one inning. Smalley had two hits, two RBIs, and six putouts against his old teammates. The Yankees played a little pinball here on Mickey Hatch's shot to right center, but before they get the ball back in the infield, Mark Salas crossed the plate for the first of two runs in that inning. That brought Billy out of the dugout, and that was all for starter Ed Whitson, who lasted less than two innings. Billy was already upset with the vagaries of the dome, and it didn't help his disposition any here when Ken Griffey tried to score on Willie Randolph's single to left. Hatcher makes a fine throw, Mark Salas blocks the plate, and he's out. The game-winning hit came off the bat of Tim Tuffle, bottom of the seventh, when his fly ball to left hit the foul pole for his second home run of the year with a man on base, and that was the difference in the ball game. Frank Viola got knocked around pretty good, but went seven innings for his seventh, uh, his fifth win of the year. Smithson goes against New York's Joe Cowley in tonight's finale. Well, if he can get the Players Association to agree, baseball commissioner Peter Ubroff says he will institute a drug testing program to cover everyone connected with the game of baseball, major and minor leagues. He says drugs are the nation's number one, two, and three problems and a menace to the integrity of the game. And scratch Kentucky Derby winners spend a buck in the Preakness on May 18th the Colts owner says he'll run instead on May 27th in the Jersey Derby at Garden State Park for a chance at a $2 million bonus in that race. And of course, that means we can forget about a triple crown winner for the racing season this year. Possibility of $2 million speaks pretty loud, doesn't yes. it? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and Bud rejoins us in just a moment. Don't go away. Imagine delicious whip topping that comes in its own unique decorator bag. Riches introduces the incredible dessert decorator. We build the decorator tip right in, so you can make pies perkier, puddings prettier, sundaes swirlier, cakes classier, and gelatin jollier. Add great taste, fun, and flair to any dessert. Try Rich's Whip Topping, the incredible dessert decorator, now in your grocer's freezer. You hear a lot about who's best these days, and free services, discounts, inflated insurance bills, and other ridiculous claims of superiority or cost-free care. I don't think you buy it. In fact, you shouldn't be sold health care. You should be given necessary affordable care for problems your doctor can conscientiously address. That is exactly our commitment at the Ashford Wildenauer Chiropractic Clinics of Columbia Heights in Minneapolis. We maintain office hours from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., and I hope we have the privilege of serving your chiropractic needs. Hey, Charlie, those Johnsonville brats look fantastic. Of course, they're the best. I love them. How about these Italians? Yeah. And these kielbasa? Mm. Attention, attention, attention. Charlie, Holly, and Farley Murphy are serving Johnsonville sausage. Johnsonville brats, Italian and kielbasa, the best threesome you can grill. Great job, boys. Thanks, Thanks Dad. Dad. All over soybean country, there's a sure sign of better grass control. Post against grass. 
it's the sure sign of better grass control without crop injury. It's the sure sign of better grass control no other herbicide can beat. Post herbicide, the sure sign of better grass control. Some medical news now. Doctors say William Schrader's brain is no longer hemorrhaging, a problem that put him back in the hospital early this week. Illinois health officials think that outbreak of salmonella poisoning was caused by a processing plant valve, which may have allowed tainted raw milk to mix with pasteurized milk. Speaking of health, how are your allergies uh, these days? Say, I'm feeling much better. Uh, there's a lot of pollen around from the trees. It's but, a little uh, bit better this week than it was last. I feel better than I did last week. <laughs> say, there used to be a column in one of the newspapers some years ago that advertised like this. This column depends upon its friends. And it's kind of like that in TV. The last couple of weeks, I got a lot of calls from bird viewers reporting a lot of red crossbills in the area. They're on their way up northern Minnesota. Colleen Needles was talking about ago. We're all, all headed for northern Minnesota later this summer. Well, the cousins of the red crossbills are still around. This is the white-winged crossbill. So there are still a few on their way. You learn something Minnesota. new every day. White-winged crossbills. Sunny and 73 degrees for the Twin Cities. Humidity at 34%. The wind is from the south at 14 and gusting to 23 miles an hour. It's going to be kind of a breezy afternoon. Pressure reading is 30.10 and the pressure is falling. So it's sunny with the temperature now at 73 degrees. Well, we've got some other temperatures for you. All taken at 1,200 hours Greenwich Mean Time. And we'll start in the Pacific. This is an evening temperature at Manila, 8 o'clock in the evening, 85 degrees. Now, all these temperatures in the center here are early afternoon temperatures and range from 55 degrees early afternoon at Moscow where it's raining to a sunny day at 102 at New Delhi, 64 at Casablanca and 75 at Nairobi. And now 7 in the morning at Caracas, it's uh, in the low 70s and 51 of the Twin Cities. At 5 this morning, our minimum temperature of Twin Cities was 48 degrees, so we had 40s and 50s this morning. Gunnison, Colorado was the cool spot and early morning temperature of 23. Now, we've got a big pocket of warm air to the west and southwest of us. Temperatures will be in the 80s and 90s all through this area to the southwest and up, and we're forecasting 80 in the metro area, in the 70s from uh, the Chicago area to uh, the mid-Atlantic coastal area. And uh, look at this cold front to the west of us. Well, for tomorrow, that cold front will be running uh, right into the five-state area, and we have a chance of afternoon showers tomorrow for the Twin Cities area. Temperatures little change, still in the 70s from Detroit to the mid-Atlantic coastal area and in the 80s from Austin up through Denver and we'll be in the low 80s again for tomorrow. A forecast for this afternoon is a sunny afternoon and breezy at 80 is the high forecast for the day. Tonight clear, low of 60 southerly winds and for tomorrow partly sunny but a 20% chance of late afternoon thunderstorms and will be around 82 degrees for Thursday afternoon, but today, 80 and sunny. Okay, on that note, we close today's noon report. Have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow. A Channel 4 editorial on the Boschwitz Memo with Ron Henberg. Arrogant, smug, contemptuous. These are words we think describe the attitude Rudy Boschwitz conveys in his memo on how to win elections. Not just because he advises fellow Republican senators to avoid giving speeches, to avoid debating their opponents, and to avoid disclosing their income tax returns, but mostly because of the disrespect Senator Boschwitz displays. A disrespect for the office he holds, a disrespect for the voters of Minnesota. Rudy's defenders say he's just being honest, that he's really a man of the people, giving his fellow politicians some practical advice. Well, we have some advice for the Senator ourselves. It has to do with understanding the meaning of certain words in the English language. For example, honesty at election time does not mean dodging the hard questions of the press and the people. Honesty means letting everyone know who you are, where your potential conflicts lie, and where you stand on the issues. Respect when speaking of voters does not mean assuming they're gullible. Respect means actually believing that the government, including United States senators, derives its power from and is a servant of the people. Caring does not mean faking sincerity at parades and fairgrounds. Caring in the best sense of Minnesota politics means feeling a personal responsibility for the concerns of all citizens. Senator, the election memo makes it sound as if you think you pulled one over on the voters. If you honestly respect and care for the people of Minnesota, we think you owe us an explanation. Better yet, an apology. Remember, Rudy, without the trust of an informed electorate, you might still be selling plywood.
I'm Ron Hanberg. We offer equal time for an opposing view. Who's there helping mom when she's up with the sun? Who helps her make lunch? Great tasting and fun. Who's there when mom's not to help us eat well? 